Good morning, Rebels, and welcome back to my life. If you haven't been watching the news recently, congratulations. Watching the news sucks. If you have been watching the news, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not we should raise the minimum wage. Some people want to raise it to $15 an hour. Other people say that's way too much. Some people say that's not enough. Some people say it will be good for the economy. Some people say it will be bad for the economy. Other people just aren't sure, and I'm one of those. So I wanted to see if I could analyze the problem, break it down, and see if this was a good idea or a bad idea, or something in between. Spoiler alert, I think it's something in between, as with most things in life. Before I begin this topic, I want to clarify, I do not have a degree in economics. I have a lot of training in finance and economics, but I do not have a PhD. I am not a professor. If you want to attack what I have to say in this video, that's probably a good place to start. Also, I'm not saying my ideas in this video are new or unique. I borrowed from many sources who themselves may have borrowed from many other sources that I may not have read because, as I said, I am not a professor of economics. Capitalism is the way that most of the economies in the world work, and it's led to some incredibly prosperous times for portions of humanity and arguably better prosperity for all of the world in general and longer lifespans, but in some parts of the world that only means like living to 40 35 instead of 35, and some parts are like really still poverty stricken. But does capitalism have an inherent flaw? One thing that, if left unchecked for too long, will bring about the end of a capitalist society or economy. Let's take a look at a microcosm of an economy with the help of my Warhammer models. As we go through this, you'll have to take my word on it that my choice of models to represent different factors of the economy does not represent any political statement on those portions of the economy. I happen to play two evil armies, orcs and undead. I don't have high elves to represent bankers, and I don't have knights to represent represent CEOs. I'm sorry. Also, coins of various denominations and nationalities will be used, but for the purposes of this video, all coins have a single value. One cha-ching, let's say. The simplest economy occurs when two people have goods to exchange and money to represent the value of those goods. This orc general will represent a prosperous farmer. He's going to be important throughout the video. And he runs a farm that produces squigs. He produces a squig, and a consumer, represented here by this zombie, wants that squig. So the zombie gives the orc a cha-ching, and the orc gives the zombie a squig. The more squigs he produces, the more cha-chings he earns, but of course he has to pay the zombie over here to water his squigs, and maybe has to pay this zombie to deliver his squigs. So the money moves around, but it moves around within the economy. And the orc can prosper above the zombies, but it's within reason because he's producing a resource with measurable value and a measurable cost of production. Now let's add a bank into the mix. This group of ghosts will represent the bank. Throughout generations, the ghosts have accumulated a lot of money. In a capitalist society, they have a way to turn this money into even more money. Capital Capitalism stems from the word capital, which is money given for the purpose of starting a company or investing. So the ghosts go to the orc and say, hey, wouldn't you like to expand your farm to be able to serve way more zombies? We can give you a bunch of cha-chings as capital that will help you do that. The orc says, yeah, and he gets a loan of five cha-chings. He spends this capital to be able to deliver squigs to ten zombies at a time. So he gets ten cha-chings, then pays the five cha-chings back to the bank, plus two extra as interest. He doesn't mind paying interest, because after all said and done, he winds up with three cha-chings in the time it would have taken him to earn one before. But what's changed about this little economy now? The money has flown upward. The ghosts have two more cha-chings than they used to. The orc also has more cha-chings, but he's got to spend those to produce his next batch of squigs. And he probably spent the five cha-ching loan within the economy to be able to deliver ten squigs at once. But the ghosts don't have to spend anything at all to produce their money. If there is a single flaw within capitalism, I'm going with this. The capital investors can accumulate more and more wealth to themselves, mathematically figuring out ways to make that wealth costs them nothing and risk them very little. This sucks money out of the economy for the rest of us, creating greater and greater inequality the more it goes on. But before you call me a communist, there's obviously a lot more factors involved in this, and this is going to have to be a multi-part video series. So I will talk about more of these factors tomorrow and how it relates to the minimum wage debate. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, enjoy your day, Rebels. Bye.